All right, everybody, welcome to the Matterhorn Business Development YouTube channel. We are live here. It is Wednesday night, February 2nd, and I am back doing another live. I am sorry for the very long uh, delay on the lives, but I am going to be back every week with a new guest doing different live content. Uh, it took a little bit uh, with everything that happened last year to get back into the creative juices flowing stage and i'm definitely back there and as a result of my artistic and creative juices flowing i have a fantastic guest here with me tonight her name is elizabeth donaldson she is the owner and content creator for betty d media she's an actress a photographer a digital creator and so welcome elizabeth to the show thank you so much for having me i'm really excited to be here Yes, I'm very glad that you are on. Yeah. Um, full disclosure, this is mine and Elizabeth's first time meeting or talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're doing well, right? We're doing well. Yeah. Uh, me and Elizabeth know some common people, and I see her content creative stuff coming on. And I, uh, the idea of art, artistic, re uh, wow, if I could speak, that would be good. The idea <laughs> of artistry in business is a concept that I became more aware of recently in my uh in my own uh dealings of business owners and dealing with people and elizabeth does a lot of content on her instagram in different places kind of talking about that and i was watching a live stream that she was doing this weekend i caught like three or four minutes of it and i thought you know what this is such a different unique business viewpoint to have about being an artist in business yeah. And I wanted to have you on to talk about that. And so Elizabeth was nice enough to come on. So thank you very much for coming in this evening. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. So um, Elizabeth and I talked for like five or 10 minutes on the phone and we just kind of, you know, drew a quick blueprint of what we wanted to discuss. So I'll kind of set the stage here, Elizabeth, and then I'm yeah. going to let you kind of like fill in and then we'll we'll see where it goes. How's that sound? I'm, I'm into it. I'm so... Okay, you're pumped. ready. I get so pumped about this subject. Like I just, yeah. have, I feel like I have so much. To so say. this is great for me because I can just sit back and watch and, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I'm just like, uh, uh, then you, you know, you have the business knowledge so you can come in yes. and, you know, yes. and pick up the pieces. So the reason I wanted to go over this, uh, for everybody that's watching is because, um, this is kind of like a, a personal travel or a personal journey, we could say that's that really sets this. I'm not really an artistic person. I'm not a fashionista. I'm I wear a lot of black and a lot of like, you know, jeans and American flag t shirts and Metallica t shirts and things like that. And that's my style. I have zero artistic ability when it comes to clothing myself. Um, when it comes to music i listen to heavy metal when it comes to cars i like them loud i like them fast and i'm not the artistic type but it occurred to me not long ago that there are different styles and and uh everybody has their actual own artistic ability mm -hmm. but we don't acknowledge the artistic abilities that we have because we think art is a paintbrush art yeah. is the ability to you know if you look at the walls of my house, they're blank, right? I have uh, racetracks that I hung up on the on the wall. That's the stuff that I'm into. I'm not like, you know, oh, this room needs color, right? I have yeah. white walls around me and this, right? But our art to me, it kind of I kind of realized if you're out in the business world, if you're out in life, you have an artistic ability of some sort. You have the ability to create in some way. Yeah. And I use the example with you. This is something that um, I realized is you can do art with brushes and with color and with, you know, brightness and creativity, or you can use a hammer and yes. I'm the hammer. Yeah. And I just yeah. have different sizes of hammers that depending on the situation, I put my own touch and breathe life into in my own way. Sure. And that was sort of a realization that I had recently. Yeah. And then you and I started, I started following your social media. I started seeing what you were putting out there. And I realized you're talking about what I had just sort of come to realize for myself. Yeah. That there's like a creativity. Well, and I think, I think one thing that's really important to state sort of up front, um, 
what you know with while the people are watching and to let and to kind of be like hey dude this is how this is going to help you with business yes. before we get because there's a lot that we can say about art yeah. and i and i want to talk about art and i and i i'm obviously i'm an artist and i'm a creative and i'm passionate about it but i think that on a very sort of like nuts and bolts level because obviously in i don't know i mean i consider myself to be a business person to a certain degree and i think that oh, business people are very they're nuts and bolts you know and yes. we want to know, like, what's the ROI? Like, how can I, why, why is this conversation about art going to be helpful to me as a business person? Um, and I think that, you know, art is an ability and creativity is an ability to be able to communicate your ideas effectively. Um, and so in a business setting, you can utilize creativity and aesthetics and art and tap into your own creativity and sort of like acknowledge your own or be aware of your own artistic sense in order to actually communicate with your intended audience. If you're in a sales sphere, you know, I mean, why do you think that they pay, um, you know, Madison Avenue guys and why is Coca-Cola the biggest company <laughs> ever in the world? It's because they've hired creatives and harnessed the power of aesthetics to be able to have great success in business. And so I think um, a lot of people in business have this concept or or if or if they're not kind of like you were saying, people who don't consider themselves artistic feel like, oh, this doesn't have anything to do with me. And I have observed on both a personal you know, with myself and then also in, in helping other people and helping forward other people's ideas that, um, it has everything to do with your business because the more that you can harness aesthetics and harness your own creativity and tap into and acknowledge how to communicate things in a creative and aesthetic way, you're just going to slay in business, you know, <laughs> you know, and in my opinion, it's just a lot more fun, you know, like it's very, I think that there's, there's sort of interesting and outdated concepts about what it means to be a professional. Um, mm -hmm. And as we're seeing in modern times, I mean, I think um, I don't follow a ton of entrepreneurs, but I do know that in the modern world of entrepreneurship, you've got like Gary V you've got, you know, all these the different big names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you like, if you don't know who Gary V is, I don't know. Are you alive? And yeah. Um, and like, he's, you know, he doesn't, um, he swears and he wears t-shirts and like there's this whole new culture of people who are transforming the fact that professionalism is just the ability to like achieve products, you know, yeah. and get the job done. And it doesn't really, professionalism isn't about like wearing a suit or um, having a red office or have, you know, <laughs> like if professionalism is anything that you want it to be. So anyways, I just wanted to state that right off the bat to kind of like, cause I, I, I know that your people are here for business. And I just want to say, like, hey, we've got you. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like this is, in my opinion, like a much ignored topic um, in business because most people in business don't understand. Just like you're saying, they're like, oh, you know, even in like everything that you just said, it, it was interesting in hearing you talking. Because, you know, the funny thing, when you're creative, when you're an artist for a living, you just are like, I'm an artist. Like, you know that you're an artist and you don't, you don't think about it. You don't wonder like, am I an artist or am I not an artist? You're just like, I'm an artist. This is what I do. And so it's, it's funny. And I never thought about this until like just listening to you talk is that I assume that everything that I do is intimately created to my artistic expression because I'm so used to thinking in that way of like, you know, I'm going to have my room blue because I'm an artist and I'm going to put this thing on the wall because I'm an artist. But it's interesting because you were like, you know, I have racetracks on the wall and there's nothing on the wall and and this and I don't go into a room and think that it should be this color. But I would venture to argue that that's your aesthetic. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Maybe you're just like, a, maybe you just have a minimalist aesthetic. And maybe if you could tap into like, yeah, I don't have anything on the walls. I like racetracks and like sort of carve that out and give it more attention or grant it more importance um, and kind of like allow yourself to like vibe out on it. <laughs> you know? 
then like there's there's an inherent power to that of like this is you know like when you're telling me that you like fast cars and you listen to heavy metal and you wear metallica t-shirts immediately in my mind that's like so i'm like oh yeah that's such a vibe like that's such a look <laughs> you know and it's, and it's interesting because there's there's this funny thing that happens in society where it's like a there's this funny thing where like people automatically assume that the word artist means that you're a painter. And I don't know why that is. Like I tell people. Exactly. That's what I was saying. Like when people yeah. think of art, they think of like what my Instagram logo looks like or what my, you know what I mean? Like, like right. they're not or looking I, at it. Yeah, exactly. They're not looking at it like that. And well, it's funny too. Cause I, I regularly tell people when they ask me what I do, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard. Cause I, I am, I'm an actress and that's one of the major things that I do. I'm a photographer, but sometimes I'm just like, you know, tired and I don't want to break it all down. So I'm just like, I'm an artist. And so many people will immediately go, oh, what do you paint? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, mm -hmm. I've never painted. No, I mean, I have painted paintings in my life, but. Okay. See, <laughs> oh, they're not very good though. No, trust right. me. Okay, I'm, good. Not a good <laughs> I'm not like, maybe when I was a kid, I was kind of okay at drawing, but but people think of it as painting. And in what well, before we started, I was like, I got to look up the definition of art in the dictionary because this is going to be cool. Okay. So check this out. This is actually like, I started reading this and I thought this is so cool. This is just from like the Oxford dictionary that's on your phone. Yeah, exactly. um, <clears throat> okay. So art or the, it's on Google, the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form, such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. The part that I loved in there was that it it's producing works to be appreciated for their emotional power, which mm -hmm. in business, I feel like it's emotion. Yeah. And people yeah, buy from you from an emotion. Exactly. They are looking for you from they're looking for your product because of an emotion. Right. They are trying to obtain an emotion that comes out of it, whether it's success, power, wealth, greed, whatever it might be, you know, um, you know, being a car person, mm -hmm. you know, there's plenty of amazing cars that are the fastest cars in the world. And then they sit in somebody's garage and they never drive it because they just sit there and say, I own it. Right. <laughs> and I'd be like, driving it every day to get groceries even though it costs two million dollars right <laughs> it's the experience for them it's the i own it right but that's yeah. the emotion that they're going for from it they're not going from it from the i'm going to take it to the track and i'm going to see what this thing can do it's like yes i paid two million dollars for that piece of metal sure but i think even that is like there's some level of emotional impact when i think of any business and any business that's doing well when i think of like you know, all of the top entrepreneurs on the planet doing a space race right now, like that's emotion. I mean, I yeah. watched the, the freaking Elon Musk, the documentary, um, <laughs> oh God, what's it called inspiration for there. They did this whole mini documentary, which is, was awesome. I was like weeping and yes, yes. I'm an artist. <laughs> I, I was literally like space has so many possibilities. Like, Oh my God. But you know, that's an emotional impact creating, you look at what Elon Musk does, like creating these cars and doing these things and, and all of this stuff, like it is creating a certain level of like power and emotion and impact. Or, you know, my favorite example is like when I think of in my life times where I have been involved in like a sales cycle mm -hmm. that, that was like lengthy, you know, when you go to buy a car, for instance, that's usually kind of like a lengthier sales cycle. Um, and when somebody's really doing a good job, it's, it's a work of art. You know, like when I think of my, my first car that I bought as an adult, um, it was really a whole experience for me. And in my opinion, there's like a creativity to that. There's an art to that. And there's a certain presentation to that. And I think that people can tap into that in varying degrees and really elevate, you know, their whole business experience. Um, okay. I want to, yeah, and that's, that's what I realized when I was talking about my artistic, like what's my art, right? It's, yeah. it's being in front of a room of people. It's being able to command a space. It's being able yes. to command an environment. That's like, I realized not long ago, even though that's what I've been doing for 
basically my whole life is talking to people and selling. I was selling pens that my brother made when I was like 10 years old, right? He didn't want to talk money to people and I'd go out and I'd sell these pens and yeah. you know, like I stuff. It's that's like I was like, that is an art and it's a freaking amazing art because that's probably I feel like <laughs> this is funny to say, I feel like the best painter in the world when he paints this masterpiece, when I can sit there and take all of these stops and barriers that people have to doing better in life and remove those yeah. and you walk out and you're like, I am a God, right? Yeah. Like, yes, that's exactly correct. It is. It's an aesthetic product. And I, and I think that like in acknowledging that, then you can look at different ways to like, if you start acknowledging like, yes, I, I do have creativity is part of business and I do have a creative side to what I'm doing. And there are aesthetics that I'm creating then you can, once that's acknowledged, you can really work on improving it. You know, like you can, you're like, oh, look, it's, there's this creative, I'm giving this experience and I'm doing this whole thing. And this is this really creative process. And how do I make this even more of an experience? How do I improve this even more? You know, um, there's this other definition. Okay. Works produced by human creative skill and imagination, creative activity, resulting in the production of paintings, drawings, or sculpture, whatever. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, various branches of creative activity, such as painting, music, literature, and dance. Okay, this is one that, this is so great. This is the last definition. A skill at doing a specific thing, typically one acquired through practice. That is the absolute perfect Boom! definition that we are here to talk about tonight. Yeah. That is exactly what it is. And art in business is I mean, your artistic ability in business is your ability to see it and envision it and then put it into play. Yeah. And I, and I also think, you know, to kind of tangent a little bit into like other, other ways that we can acknowledge that art can assist business or creativity is especially now because we live in a world that's so digitally driven and there's so much social media and everyone's having to present themselves, um, in a digital space, in a digital sphere. Um, and so in a way, it's like all of a sudden, all these people are called upon to be little filmmakers when in the past that, you know, like it's like every individual, if you own a business, OK, now you're a filmmaker, <laughs> you know, like so because you have to if you're a small business owner, right, you've got Instagram, you've got LinkedIn, you've got YouTube live stream, you've got this, that and yet, you know, you have all these different things and you have to be aware of different aspects of like art communication and creativity that maybe in the past you didn't really have to think about it so much you know no that's absolutely correct because if i open up a gym and mm -hmm. i have the same barbells and materials and everything as the gym across the street but the gym across the street's got this mad instagram account that uh, you know gets a million views i'm gonna be like i'm a failure because <laughs> my my ad I made on Canva looks like it was made by an eight-year-old. So I'm just going <laughs> to close up, right? Yeah. Like you feel like that's the case with the way social media and everything is working. Yeah. Is that you have to be that artistic person. Hi, Luna. Sure. Let's sit down. Well, and, and, you know, to be honest, as somebody who does social media management and, you know, I've grown my own social media, I'm able to work for myself because I've grown my own social media. I have like 15,000 mm -hmm. followers on Instagram and, um, I would say that like, it is true that you do in, in today's sort of like landscape, you have to be, and, and again, you don't have to be a painter and you don't have to be an amazing graphic designer. You just have to have the ability to communicate a message in a way that's like desirable, interesting, entertaining, you know, like you have to kind of be doing something that nobody else is doing or, or think, mm -hmm. I think that it's really important for people when they're looking into like sales and marketing and, and how they want to get it is that they really think outside of the box and think, you know, what, what makes us unique? I don't know. Like what's, give me a good example. Give me an example of like, I feel like we should audit someone's business. Like, we should, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you give me an example of some dry business thing and then I'll give you 10 million creative ideas on how that could be marketed. Yeah. It's sort of like, um, Like I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Well, I'll give you half of what you just asked for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Do in it. one of my, I, so I have, I have another business, right? Yeah. And I have, um, at my disposal, I have somebody 
who can create really good pieces of promotion and, and ads and things like that. And I'll basically just be like, listen, I want it to say this and I want it to look like that. Cause like, I know the message I want to communicate, but if it was me, it would just be like a word document and it'd be like, call me. Right. Like it would be like, there would <laughs> yeah. be no creativity to it. So I have the ability to just be like, Hey, this is what I want. And then she duplicates it and she gives it to me like an hour later. And I'm like, you did this in an hour, like unbelievable. Right. So like, yeah. I have somebody like that. But then in another business that I have, it's just me. I'm like the one man band, right? Sure. And I'm like, oh, I got this amazing idea. And then I go into Canva and I've got it like all pictured in my mind. And then I'm done with it. And I'm like, this is awful. Like, I don't even want to post this, right? Like <laughs> it's it's the equivalent of my white wall house with my racetracks on it. Like sure. it's there. It doesn't look the way I want it to. And then somebody will like take some artistic ability to it and they'll be like, Psh, and you're like, wow, how did you do that? Right. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like that person that comes to you. Who's like, this is my social media. And you're like, hmm. right. Like, hmm. Okay. Um, so like you were telling me that you were meeting with somebody who had a product yeah. and it was just like the product, the product, the product, the product. I'm probably like that same type of a person that would come to you and be like, here's my product. This is great thing. It's but, but like, how do you take somebody like me and convince me or get me to like, see that a, it's an artistic thing and get me to think like outside the box, I guess. Well, I think the key is looking at, these are the things that I think of when I'm looking at somebody's account or looking at their media um, and sort of helping them, get to another place with it. First of all, you have to, you have to assume the position first. You have to honestly look at your materials that are going out to, for the public to view and ask yourself, would I want to consume this content? You know, like if it's something that you're putting on Instagram or if it's something that, if it's an ad, um, or a, like a YouTube video or whatever, you have to be like, is this center? Do I like this? Is this good? Do I want to watch this? Do I want to look at this? Um, and then, so that's the first thing. And I think like a lot of times you're going to be like, no, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of times that people have like, if they honestly thought, let's say you have an Instagram account, right. And you're selling, um, you're selling this soda, <laughs> right. Yeah. This off brand LaCroix. Um, Bell V it's from Aldi. So let's Ooh. say you have an Instagram and you're selling the Bell V mm -hmm. most people in business would just be like, buy Bell V they'd have like, here's a picture of Bell V here's another picture of Bell V here's another picture by the Bell V. Hey, we're having a sale on Bell V. Hey, right. Bell v is green. You're green. trying to get the, the product, the can, the design of the can to be the focal point. And then you're just like, buy this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. You're just like, hey, hey, yeah. hey. Whereas if you start thinking outside the box and start thinking about the needs of your audience, and this is like where, you know, advertising comes into play and in marketing. And as an actress, I've done, literally I've made a living from doing commercials for like 25 years. So I like really understand the world of commercials. Although I, sometimes it's funny Sometimes there's commercials that I've acted in that I'm like, they're paying, they're spending so much money to make this singular commercial. And I don't think it's very good. Um, mm -hmm. But there's ways to, to make content and make advertising that that's really exciting. And it's really engaging. Like for instance, if you thought like nobody wants to see 8,000 pictures of a can of Bell V with like, you know, eventually people are just going to be like, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. But if you start to think about the needs of your audience, like, okay, what is this product? Well, it's a soda water. It's sparkly. And you just like literally what I do with anyone and even with my own stuff, you know, if I wanted to advertise, I would like just take a notebook down and be like, okay, let me just look at this can. Let me just like pay attention. Like, what is this price? It's sparkly. It's okay. Sparkles. It's got wa it's water, right? It's hydrating. Hydrating. Yep. Refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's refreshing. Um, and then you could list down whatever, like 16 things, you know, we're not going to spend all night trying to sell this generic off-brand LaCroix, but, and then what I like to do, especially when it comes to, to like your own material 
is is think like, okay, what do I like? So we're just going to pretend for the sake mm -hmm. of argument, just for the sake of this example, that you have a business selling off-brand LaCroix, Bellevue, okay, right? Mm -hmm. So then we write down, what do you like? What? Who are you? Okay, blank walls. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Um, uh, Metallica. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else did you tell me? Heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Cars. Cars. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I don't know, like, what else are you into? What do you, okay. The, here's some questions that I ask people, like when I have clients, like what is your, what's your biggest purpose as a human being? I like to see other people hit their goals. Awesome. I like to see people doing better. Okay, cool. So other people hitting goals and winning. Yep. Okay. So you can create like a bigger list for that. But um, anyways, we've got a couple. So sparkles, hydration, refreshing, um, heavy metal music, cars. Do you like cars, like the construction of the cars? Or do you like like racing cars? both okay cool yeah okay great okay so now just from that i'm just gonna like throw you a bunch of different ideas at how we could sell um and market this product in a creative way that would that you would have so much fun doing okay okay um so you could find um you could sort of like center the whole brand around like speed racing and like sort of like an intensity of life an intensity of living. So like, and since you love heavy metal bucket, like most people I think, think like you see a lot of commercials that people make and they feel like it needs to be uh, like milk toasty content and like, it can't be revolutionary. And so then they're like, use this dumb, you know, music that sounds like, Dee do 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 Bell V. But like, what if instead maybe you hired some actors or maybe you had some friends, right? Like maybe you had some friends who were kind of like creative types mm -hmm. and you were like, hey, can you make me a couple videos? Uh, like maybe you have a friend who has a big beard and he's covered in tattoos. And um, and then you say, like, hey, dude, can you do a video where you crush this can of Bell V? Um, and just like drink it really fast and then crush the can in front of the camera. And he's like, you know, like next time you come over to my house, like, would you mind? I'm going to use it to advertise. And mm -hmm. then nowadays you don't have to have a, like a special camera studio. You can make it chill. And then you get a video of the dude and he's like, Bell V, right? <laughs> and then you go on to Instagram reel. And you add Metallica to it because you can pick any type of music, like, yep. or you pick some heavy metal yep. and then you just like use, you know, it's very easy. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. You just do like a close take. And then like you have this dude crushing Bell V in a Metallica shirt. And then there you go. And then you can just continue making, and then you can like reach out to the crowd, like reach out to write some people or write your friends and be like, Hey, can you, I'm doing this campaign for my Bell V um, can you send me a video of you like crush it? Like, here's a, here's an example. Can you send me, can you just take 10 seconds today and send me a video where you're crushing the Bell V right. And then you get yep. all your friends and now you have 20 ads, right. And then you can add to that and be like, you know, I'm going to take a trip to go see this like racing show and I'm going to drink Bell V and I'm going to like give Bell V to people in the audience at this racetrack. And then you, I'm going to get a little clip of like, you know, Joe Schmo at the racetrack talking about like, <laughs> like talking about this Bell V for, for 10 seconds. And then I'm going to have him crush it because he's thirsty at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you like, you just run around, like go to the racetrack and you talk to people. Like I, I've worked at a racetrack event I, as a spokesmodel. Okay. <laughs> I worked at this thing. This is a side story, but it's hilarious. I was a spokesmodel at the Indy 500 at this like Gillette had like a station set up where yeah. like the models would hand people razors so they could like, there were these little shaving stations and like, it was a wild time. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> 
<laughs> me like handing these dudes with no teeth like razors so they could shave. It was so crazy. I also won a turkey leg eating competition at this thing. But this is why I love Indiana. I'm from Indiana. That's what we love. <laughs> We love the Indianapolis 500. We but, love right, but so imagine, imagine that you took your Bell V, mm -hmm. the freaking Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and then you you went with a case of Bell V's and you just like went around outside and you were like just ask people to like drink it and do videos and then you collected a bunch of videos of like random people drinking Bell. Like you know, you just found characters, right? And you just let them yeah. do the work for you, and then that's part of your campaign. And then maybe Bellevue goes to the racetrack, right? And you have all these pictures of like the Bellevue, um, like you at the different racetracks you go to, it's the Bellevue is like in the shop, but then like what's really part of the show is the racetrack. And then, and then you can, the caption doesn't even have to be anything about the drink. It can just say like, this was the race and this is why I had fun and like, blah, 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 blah. And it's all about racing. And then because you also like cars, like not just racing cars, but you also like yeah. cars, then you can like take Bellevue to like around to cars and be like, I went to this car show and here's like, here's me with my Bellevue at the car show. So really the secret is that like, then it has nothing to do really with Bellevue's, but you've built a brand that's like all about you and the things that you love and the things that you're passionate about. And then you've just sort of like snuck this guy in there. And then all of a sudden you have this like, you know, off brand LaCroix that's marketed to people who love race car driving and Metallica and you're mm -hmm. hitting a niche in the market that has never been hit. Okay. Car so I've learned two things. One, yeah. you and I need to figure out how to become the Florida distributors of Bell V because we're going to kill it down here. <laughs> but then two, <laughs> two, we start, uh, yeah, we start like an off-brand LaCroix company. Yeah. Like I think Bell D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so basically what you're saying is even if you don't think that you've got some sort of artistic or some sort of a thing behind you or behind your business or whatever, there is something sitting there. That yeah. until you acknowledge as being the thing, you're yeah. just letting life pass you by in a sense. Yes. Yeah. And also like as a business owner, I think if you can, you can figure out how to blend together, like in marketing and even in your business, in your meetings or whatever, right? Like, let's say, let's say we're not selling off brand, uh, whatever, but let's say you need to have business meetings. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe do your business meeting at a racetrack. Maybe do your business meeting at a car show. Maybe like go to a freaking Metallica concert. You know, like if you start just tapping into like the, I guess, not just your own creativity, but just the power of art and creativity and like aesthetics in general, then I think it creates an environment that's like more powerful, more successful you're going to get better sales. You're going to create better relationships. And also like, you're going to freaking have fun. Like, it's just going to be a lot more fun, you know? It's interesting. So <clears throat> you, you probably don't know this about my dad, but he wrote a book called fun at work. Oh, right? fun. I mean, no, I didn't know that. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So he wrote a book called fun at work. And his whole, his whole thing was like, if, if it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And most people think, oh, well, if something's boring, then I'm just not going to do it. No. What it meant was, he would make it fun. He would do yes. whatever he could to make it fun. So yes. how do I make this boring crap ass thing that I have to do or this thing that I feel like I'm stuck in? How do I make it fun? Yes. And that's really kind of what you're talking about. There's it's that artistic, make it yourself, make it who you are, make it, make it you and make yes. it creative and make it fun in your own style or in your own way. Cool. And that's what you're saying with like, okay, do a meeting here, do a meeting the way you would do it. It's really about creating your own style with the way you do things to make it interesting and to make it different for you. Yes. If, if, if I'm, if I'm uh, sensing correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then I think tapping into and looking at how you can present those things in a way, how you can present your vibe and your aesthetic and your communication in a way that's going to be understood by others. You know, I think that's the other sort of like mechanical side of art and creativity. And I think, you know, if people can afford to, um, 
like hire on creative consultants or mm -hmm. hi, like, for instance, I manage an account for my friend um, and she's a real estate developer. And I actually think she's like actually an undergrad. She says that she's not an artist, but I went to her house to like follow her around to do like a content creation day. And she had this like amazing drawing of like a horse. And it was like, I was like, and it, I was like looking at it and I was like, wow, this is such a cool drawing. Like, I love this. This is so interesting. And I was like, Meg, who did this? And she goes, oh, I drew that. I just don't do a lot of drawing anymore. And it's funny because she's like, oh, I'm not an artist. And she like drew this freaking like piece of fine artwork. And yeah. Um, but nonetheless, it's like sometimes when you're, you know, when you're looking in, when you're doing business deals all day or selling all day, it can create an environment where it's kind of hard to pull your mind out of that state to like, you know, and like you said, like edit videos and do things like that. Well, you know, you just caught, you just said something that made me not to cut you off, but you're like, no, okay, so it. you're, you're doing, you're doing sales every day. You're doing the same thing every day. And what I find is entrepreneurs, business owners, they get stuck just doing the same repetitive thing over and over. Sure. And then you you stop putting that creative flair into it and it yeah. becomes boring. It becomes the same thing. Yeah. Like you have to find a way to make it exciting again and to be different again. And, you know, even though I used to do the same lecture three times a weekend each day in a different city three times, and then next weekend I do the same thing over and over again. To me, it was always like different crowd different yeah. people, different personalities. It was always just like a brand new seminar again, right? Like, sure. unless I had a dead room, because when you have a dead room and you can like literally just drop dead and nobody would even notice. That yeah. you dead, it's yeah, like, yeah. get me out of this freaking thing. But that's not that my fault. Again. That's like, just the crowd has zero life and therefore sure. it's sucking the fun out of it, right? But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. people just keep doing the same thing every day in their jobs and they forget that there is a way to make it creative or to make it fun. Sure. Sure. I mean, yeah, I, I think, I think that people need to start, I think that business owners and business people need to look at the incorporation of creativity and aesthetics into their business model as just like a vital part of it, you know, and whether that means tapping into your own creativity, doing, you know, doing those dumb wine and paint things, you know, figuring out how to like, you know, doing what I said, where like we wrote down like all the goals, figuring out your purpose, figuring out how you can connect with other people in like a fun way. Um, or if it means having a creative team, you know, if you have, if you have the finances and then also like engaging with your, if you have the finances to have a creative team, mm -hmm. like really making them a part of the team and really engaging with them and letting them in and like, get you know gleaning what you can glean from that because they're going to see things in a different way so but i think i think if you're not approaching business as a creative endeavor on all spectrums in marketing and how you approach it and how you do your deals and how you do your meetings you're missing out on mm -hmm. on every level you're missing out personally because it's not as fun <laughs> you're missing out on opportunities to create rich experiences and valuable experiences with other people and just like from a straight up like dollar bill perspective, you're missing out on cash, <laughs> you know? Um, I think that the more, if all if we all think of like businesses that are really thriving or businesses, I don't know, name some businesses that are, that are popular that you admire. Like um, so I, this is funny. So mm -hmm. I tend to go like away from the herd on like a lot of things, right? Like mm -hmm. movies, books, uh, popular TV shows. I'm usually kind of like in the more somewhat like obscure lands or whatever. Right? <laughs> sure, sure, That's sure. Just sort of like the nature. Like I hate it when things just get like really dull and corporate and just like the same shoe store in every strip mall or whatever, right? Sure, so sure. like something that I really do like um, – so it fits my interest. It fits what I do. I love the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Mm -hmm. um, they, everything they do is like over the top. They, they're like, you know, you're talking about how you would sell Belle V. That's how they're selling coffee, right? They've yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Travis Pastrana doing backflips over helicopters. And, you know, they put a minigun on a Prius and they blow things up. And they're, you know, like that. They're just like these army veterans being themselves, right? Yeah. And that. Yeah. 
type of difference and creativity and just it fits my style that's something that like i just i like that i like the way that they do it it's not your regular like hmm come have a cup of good coffee in the morning it's like yeah. you know here's a coffee being shot out of a cannon right like that is something that like to me i was like that's the type of coffee i want right and so that's what right. i drink it's exciting but but okay but name some name some companies that are like super well known okay um okay let me think here i have to stop and think um super well known companies uh i'm drawing a blank right now but i know that that's not actually let me think, let me think of different bit like okay <laughs> well elon musk i mean i know he's a businessman i love everyone who's watching this um i'm trying to marry elon musk if you have any yes connection. i've heard that <laughs> to grow up I'm trying to be the next few Mars. Um, but Elon Musk, here's an example of like, I mean, I'm obviously obsessed with Elon Musk and I follow his account, but he's got like playlists. He's got freaking like, he hires interesting people onto Tesla. He's, they're doing like very different things. If you go to his, um, like go to his Twitter, it's like ridiculous. Like, it's sort of a funny creative playground and he's doing things in a very different way. He's doing business things. And I know he, he obviously works hard. I mean, obviously anyone watching this, I just want to acknowledge that certainly there's more to business than like, yay, like it should be fun and creativity. Like I'm not, yes, exactly. I'm not like a dingus, you know what I mean? Like I, like this is, this is some, this is something that I do believe is an important aspect of it, but obviously there's other things, but um, okay. And then Coca-Cola, I've mentioned that Coca-Cola, has a brilliant marketing strategy. I mean, from the point, and now I think there's some items that when they came out, they were doing something really different. And now they're just a staple of American community. Like now I'll buy a t-shirt with Coca-Cola logo onto it just because it's so classic and so ingrained and so much represents. Yeah. Like that. represents mm -hmm. the American dream. Um, Starbucks, when it first came out, like, I mean, say what you will about Starbucks. It also is a great business model, but also they have like all these fun things. They have like mugs and they have paraphernalia and they have. And everybody wants the, uh, the Christmas coffee cup or, you know, right? yeah, we can yeah. say whatever we want about them, but they do a damn good job at what they do. Even if it's not what I normally do, I'm like, you got to give them props. Right. Like, exactly. Like, yeah. and they have, they have creativity and aesthetics. You look at like, I mean, target is my favorite example. Target. I thank God there's not a target in my neighborhood because like it would just destroy me. But target has done a phenomenal job at marketing, like their environment, you know, like mm -hmm. they have these little products that are like cute and they have this thing. And, and then like the, even their bins of stuff that you need and these mini deodorants and all this stuff that's very like appealing and interesting. And like, I mean, everything having to do with selling, it's all about creating an emotion, creating a feeling, creating like an impact and making people be like, Oh, I love this. I need this for myself, you know? And you can, I think you can apply that to any field and any genre, you know? Um, now people doing business, uh, like a lot of people who are going to be watching this, are they people who are doing stuff that's like more B2B or are they doing stuff where they're like selling a product or they sell people or. Okay. So I, I just realized I've got a couple things in the, um, in the chat that might be able to help us by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think most people who watch our video, so we get like a huge gamut based off of the uh, comments and reactions and stuff that I get. I've gotten mm -hmm. really large companies and corporations who have reached out to us for help. And then I've gotten people who literally have a, a business in their mom's basement that they package and ship and stuff like that. So yeah. it's a pretty broad gamut. I think it, typically it's probably a lot of business to customer type stuff. Right. Got it. But, Makes um, sense. A couple people uh, said Geico and Progressive Insurance commercials. Yes. And, oh, my God. Those are great yeah. examples. Yeah. Right? Thank you in the comments. Jeanette. I had it on full screen, so I couldn't see the the uh, the chats coming in. And then I was sure. like, oh, people sure. are leaving us suggestions. We're sitting here like morons like, uh, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I don't know. Man. So, yeah, Progressive Insurance commercials. Those are interesting. As great much as I hate example. insurance commercials, they're better than the other insurance commercials, right? Yeah. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. 
and Geico, I have Geico insurance. Like, well, and it creates a feeling, it creates an emotion, you know, like people love those commercials and they, and nowadays it's like any small business, you know, they're selling. So and I think the other thing that I want to mention is I think people get really stuck into like, when they're a small business, they feel like, oh, well, I'm never going to be able to do that. And that's true. You're not going to be like the next Geico, right? But you don't have to be like, you know, not doing your creative side just because you're not going to be the next Geico, if that makes well, sense. Well, and you could be the guy taking pictures of bearded tattoo dudes smashing Belle V, you know? <laughs> Somebody has to do that. You know? I mean, <laughs> the amount of time on TikTok, which I spend a lot of time on. I spend more time than I should on TikTok. Like, mm -hmm. and you know, I want to, okay, before I say this, because there might be an older crowd watching this, I'm going to explain something about TikTok, my, my views on TikTok, because I actually have passionate feelings about TikTok. Um, most people think of TikTok as an app that young people use where they do dancing, right? Mm-hmm. What are your what are your views on TikTok? What I am think? the old person who thinks that it's young people watching dancing. So okay, have yeah. you ever downloaded TikTok and watched the videos? No. Okay. Oh, I'm so. <laughs> I told you I go the other way. I'm like the uh, everybody's going TikTok. I'm just gonna go this way. <laughs> it's so funny because I think, anyways. I mean, that's a longer conversation. But um, <sighs> so this is why I think that TikTok is, has started a revolution, social media also, but TikTok in particular. Um, so TikTok is basically, are you familiar with Vine? I remember Vine from, it was like what, eight, nine, 10 years ago, something like I that. Guess, I never had Vine and I was never, I didn't it. either. I just kind of know about it, so to speak. It was just I was sort late of to the party on on Vine. On the thing. And if there's anybody watching, I like, what do you think TikTok? Like, I, I'd love to know your views on TikTok. Um, but this is my opinion because I am a consumer. I love TikTok. I watch so much TikTok. I, I really am into TikTok. And here's what I've found and what I think is really interesting about TikTok. You have Instagram, which is an environment like Facebook is Facebook, whatever. We're all familiar with that. Instagram is an environment that's sort of like a bit more curated, a bit more like Preened. We're all familiar with influencer marketing, you know, yeah. like um, pretty girls wearing pretty clothes and, you know, people taking pictures against um, wall art walls and inspirational quotes and all that stuff. Instagram has that sort of like certain, you know, pictures of your food and pictures of cooking with TikTok. And I don't know how this happened, but it sort of opened the door for all different kinds of people. Two, this is where it ties back around to our conversation, be creative. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone with a phone could make a video. And, in, and if you watch, if you consume a lot of TikTok, you'll see that it sort of blew the door open in terms of the rules and regulations of what can make a person famous, what could make a person. That's for famous, sure. Right. So there's like, and yeah, sure. I mean, if you watch, there's like this, this reality show that's really bad on Netflix. It's not bad. I actually loved it called Hype House. And it's all about these like teenage influencers. Sure. There's a lot of teenagers like just posting videos that I don't even think, I don't think their content's very good. And I don't understand that, but there's also this whole world of like people living in places where they never like people getting discovered and people becoming famous. Uh, like there's this account called Vampira and blood. And it's like, I don't know where these people live. It's somewhere in the middle of America. They're like in their early sixties, I think. And there are, there's couple that's been together and they wear, they like rock music. They wear, the guy has like a mullet, you know, they're both sort of like a little bit bigger. The woman's kind of husky and they do all these really kind of like bad quality music video lip syncing things to like wild songs. And it's like the production mm -hmm. value is terrible. They are not attract. They're not traditionally attractive. They're very interesting people. And they are like hugely famous because of TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I bring that up to say, that I think in the in the old model of like advertising and marketing and television and Hollywood, it was sort of like Hollywood was telling us what we should and shouldn't like. And Hollywood was driving the narrative as to like what was pretty and what was art. 
and like yeah. who the stars were. And then TikTok kind of like blew the whole door open. Like I follow a guy on TikTok whose name is Moonshine Racer. And he's like some hillbilly who lives in like, I don't know where he lives, but he is a legitimate hillbilly. And he, um, he just, he's missing a lot of teeth. And he's very thin and he makes these like very strange videos <laughs> where he's like on a, on a green screen. I mean, the videos are truly, I mean, moonshine racer, like he is not a filmmaker, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. He is definitely hillbilly and his videos are definitely strange, but he's got like millions of followers. And like, anyways, I say all of this to say that I think that the traditional concepts of what is acceptable media and unacceptable media are sort of like really radically changing. And so, you know, I think that people, especially in business are confined in this thing of like, Oh, I have to, it would be unprofessional, you know, like it would like back to our example about the generic LaCroix, it would be unprofessional if I just chugged this LaCroix and then burped afterwards. But it's like, we're living in a whole new world of creativity and media and the rules are really mm -hmm. changing. And I think that as people embrace that there's, and also it's like rules are changing in terms of how you have to look and how, you know, like what professional looks like, even things like many people run successful businesses and are influencers and they just like go on social media with like messed up hair and no makeup and, and like, and do wild things and it, it's fine, you know, because I think yeah. the underlying thing is that your quality, your intention, is your communication reaching, like, are your ideas impinging? And as long as you can create something that the ideas impinge, it doesn't have to look a certain way. You know, creativity doesn't have to be confined into this box. Mm -hmm. So and I think I love TikTok. <laughs> Joe in the comments says TikTok. TikTok is great, but it just drains its time. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that's probably pretty accurate. Um, so it's kind of like from a creative perspective, from an artistic perspective, so to speak. Yeah. You can just be yourself and be you and do yes. you. And if yes. you acknowledge that you have some sort of an artistic ability of some kind, then roll with that. Yes. And maybe if you realize you don't have so much creative ability in a certain area, maybe learn how to kindle that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or hire experts or, 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 you know, consultants who can assist you because I think, I think sometimes there is, there is a technical aspect. There is a technical part to it. Yeah, there's a technical part. And I, and I think and you kind of like illustrated that so well when you were like, I try to create this thing on Canva and it just looks ridiculous. <laughs> and then I pay this girl and she can just be like, bloop, bloop, bloop. And it's true. Yeah. Like if creatives are people who are creative for a living. Um, they definitely have a leg up. Yeah. And and they're also in, like in, the, in those types of things. Exactly. Yeah. They practice. They know the tools. They know the apps, you know, like. Yeah. They, well, they've they done it a million times. So sometimes getting someone to help you, or like you said, if you have a creative vision, like maybe you're like, the thing is, is that I want to video all these guys with beards and tattoos, just smashing this off-brand LaCroix. <laughs> but I don't like every time I do my camera, the videos just don't look the way I want them. So you either hire somebody who can teach you like, okay, cool. When you hold it at this angle here, or you go on YouTube, right? Yeah. And learn a little bit about editing or filmmaking or learn, like, I think a lot of people could benefit to learn a little bit about lighting, you know, about, so just like educate themselves a little bit on how yes. to improve the aesthetics of what they're putting out there. So, yeah. so yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of the thing, like either hire some people to help you with aesthetics or sometimes you can't hire somebody. So you have to just acknowledge like, okay, I need to make sure that like that my creative expression and my communication, my artistic presentation is, is constantly getting better. Like acknowledge that that's part of the business and like, what research do I need to do? You know, like do what, what online courses or what YouTube videos or whatever, do you watch a little bit of every single week so that you can get a little better at your creative side, you know, just like nurturing that side. Yeah. Now, before we go, because we're yeah. already coming up on like almost an hour. Like I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. when you start going, you, time just 
that's part of the artisticness of it. Time just doesn't. Yeah, I know. It just evaporates, right? Yeah. If you can, in just like a couple of minutes, tell the analogy that I caught on your Instagram live. You were talking about the tiger tails. Is that what it was? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't make this up. This is from Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote yeah, yeah. Um, my – she's the one who wrote Eat, Pray, Love and blah, blah, blah. But her favorite book of mine – no. You'll be surprised to know book. I have not read that book. Hmm? Sorry. Big Magic? <laughs> no. Uh, Eat, oh, Pray, Eat, Pray, Love. love. Yeah. It's, uh... yeah I did not – did not read that one. Uh, <laughs> but she she wrote this book called Big Magic, and it's an incredible book for anyone. And she talks about it both in Big Magic and if you just go and like onto YouTube and look up her TED talk, she talks about it. But she talks about creative ideas, and I think this can be applied to a business deal or a business impulse. Um, being like having to catch a tiger by its tail, mm -hmm. right? And it's like like the tiger's running by and you got to catch it. And if you don't catch it, you miss it. It's gone. Yeah. You don't get that tiger. And, and I've had that happen with, with different creative ideas where, you know, like a script, a short film that I was like, I'm going to write this short film. It's going to be the best idea. And then I don't write it. And then like a year later or six months later, it's just like actually not even relevant anymore. You know, like mm -hmm. it doesn't even, it's just not relevant. <laughs> and so then that maybe it would have been great. And if I would have made it and done it, it would have been great. But, you know, and I think same with like business opportunities, you got to snatch mm -hmm. it, you know? No, I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting. I, I don't know why I thought of this now, but because I thought of it, I'm going to catch this analogy by the tail. Catch I'm it. I'm going to talk about it. Okay. So I listened, like I was mentioning earlier, I listened to a lot of like heavy metal and stuff like that. I, and yeah. I have my limits as to what I listen to because when people think of heavy metal, they think of all kinds of crazy stuff. And there's a lot of absolute crazy stuff out there that I zero reality with, right? But there's sure. a lot of bands that for whatever note, for whatever reason, they they catch me by just the way that they blend the melodies. I like a lot of melodic metal. So it's screaming, yeah. but then there's melody and it's on they stack them and it's just okay so i was watching um one of my new one of my favorite bands is a band called trivium they're out of florida here and yeah. you know they've got that and so i was watching something that they did and this stuck with me i watched this probably i don't know four or five years ago i watched them making one of their albums and the lead singer was talking about doing the vocals for the album and it's a lot of you know yelling and screaming and all this type of stuff and yeah. he was he was perplexed because he was really pissed off like things weren't going right he was really pissed off he was in a crappy mood and so he went into the studio and he recorded all of his vocals and he was yelling and he was doing his screaming and he was doing all of everything that he does and he's like i this should sound amazing because i'm like pissed off and i'm yelling and i'm screaming and i'm doing all that stuff and then a couple of days later he was like really happy he was in a great mood and he listened to everything that he sang and he's like this is freaking terrible <laughs> right? and so he went back yeah and he redid it and they came out beautiful when he was happy when he was creative when he was yeah. like you know he, you would think okay i'm making hard music i'm yelling i'm screaming these vocals i want to be pissed off when i do it he found he couldn't understand it but this is really what we're talking about he's like yeah. why does this sound like crap when i'm like pissed off but when i'm happy and i'm like being me i can make these screaming and the vocals and all that stuff come together and that is that's that artistic ability it's it's a high it's a high level it's not a low level of creation totally. yeah it's high it's i i relate to that a lot especially as an actress like you mm -hmm. the day i did a movie um and my character was really um it was like a a dark comedy um horror type it wasn't it was like a thriller like a dark comedy thriller and my character was just like tortured but not physically tortured but just like emotionally yeah tortured by her like very psychotic sister the entire time and it's funny that we had this day we had to do this like super emotional scene and that day I think partially is like when you're living in the skin of a character who I, I'm not a method actress but like when you're just living in the skin of a character who's having a lot of emotional difficulty. Um, it just, it kind of rubs off on you. Even sometimes just 
like I had a lot of neck issues because I was just always like tense, you know, like my body was always tense every time we were shooting just because the character was tense, you know? Yep. So there was one day where it finally just kind of got to me and I like cried all the way to set. And I was just like having a bad, I was personally having a really bad day um, and personally having a lot of intense emotions. And that was the day that my acting suffered the most. And you would think, you would think that it was like, oh, well, your character was so, you know, upset and going through so much. And so like, shouldn't that have been the best acting? And I was like, no, because you need to kind of be in a space where you're like in aesthetics. Like you said, it's a high level, right? So yeah. you have to sort of personally be in a, in a creative and aesthetic space that's like more high level in order to have like control over what you're creating, you know, doesn't mean that you can't pour, take, take something that's negative and flip it and be like, and channel it into something, yeah. you know, but yeah, exactly. still you have to kind of be like in that space, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. So before we end two things, yes. uh, somebody has a question for you, but also I'm going to yeah. put your, your contact details or some information about you in the description, but why don't you tell anybody that's watching how, do, how do they find you on Instagram? What's your Instagram handle or uh, let's see, I don't even know what the inst I don't even know what you call it on Instagram. What what yeah, how do I find you on Instagram? Um, you can find me on it, my main account, which is basically mm -hmm. like an art and comedy account. So if you want to just see me making a, an outfit out of tinfoil and being a weirdo, um, that is Elizabeth Dot Donaldson. But it's Elizabeth, you can see my name on the screen. So it's with it's an S. With an S. So yep. Elizabeth with an S dot Donaldson. Um, and then my new account that's like focused on like social media marketing and management and just creativity, creative strategy for artists and business owners, um, is Betty D D E E media co. Um, yeah. And then, and I have a photography account too, but I, I don't want to overwhelm people with accounts. <laughs> what's but. your, what, what's your website? Um, it's just Elizabeth Donaldson creative.com. And you can find everything. You can find links to my podcast. You can see my photography. You can see my acting. You can see all of it. It's Perfect. all there. Yeah. So I'll be able to link that in there. Now I did get a question, and if it's a if it's a crazy long answer or whatever, let me know. But somebody says, Elizabeth, do you have some numbers uh, that represent how many people a creative ad will reach in comparison to a regular ad? Talking about Instagram, for example, and they say, "Sorry if my English isn't very good. I'm from Brazil." But That's I think fine. Nicholas was fine there. Um, does that make sense? The way that that it, it totally makes sense, but I just don't have numbers. Yeah, um, it, I think there's a lot of variables that can enter into that. Yeah, well, and I don't have the data. I haven't. Whenever I've taken over and I'm managing an account, it's like I'm just I'm doing stuff that's very creative. So I don't. Usually when I come into a space, like I'm working with someone who's at a smaller level and they're new and they're sort of, you know, like I'm not like in, for instance, if you're like a huge company like Gary Vee or Coca-Cola or Girl Boss, you've got an entire media team who's like their full-time job is to like manage your analytics, look at the before and afters and, and you know what I mean? Do all that. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm going to just be honest and say like, I'm not an expert at like, I watch my own analytics and I'm aware that like creative stuff does better, but there's, I mean, that's a whole entire, the analytics of creativity and, and like creative strategy, A is very personal because yep. it's a case by case basis based on like your audience and et cetera, et cetera. And it's also not something that I'm going to claim to be an expert in because I'm not. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Nicholas, I hope that that helps to some degree, but uh, you can also check out Elizabeth's instagram and other places and maybe get some more information on that for yeah. you and uh welcome from brazil that's awesome we have uh somebody yeah, from so fun. It out. um okay good so why don't we wrap it up here for now i will okay. say to everybody who's still watching or made it this far on the replay whatever if you have other social media type questions artistic questions things like that uh, I'm sure I'll be able to twist Elizabeth's arm to come back on some point in the future and uh, we can try and answer all of those and uh, see what we can do to help you out. So thank you all very much. And uh, Elizabeth, thank you very much for coming on. It was You're awesome. You're so welcome. Yeah, it was such a pleasure. Have a beautiful rest of your evening.
Yes, you as well. Yeah. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, like, subscribe. And Elizabeth, I'm going to end the live, and then you and I will still be in the room. And then we'll just, uh, I'll, I'll say goodbye to you there. So like good night, everybody. I'll see you next week on our next live.